AQA, A-Level Physics, this video is about moments. This is the specification that I'll be covering in this video. Uh, there you go, let's do it. So a moment, uh, a lot of this is GCSE, but the questions will be trickier. So uh, the basics, a moment is a turning force. Uh, it's a special type of force which makes things turn. Uh, another name for it is a torque, with a Q, a torque. Uh, moments act about a point, like a force will act on an object or at a point. Moments act about a point, and they may be clockwise or anti-clockwise. For example, if I want to tighten this nut, then there would be a clockwise moment that would do that. Uh, and I could draw that on the diagram with this circle with an arrow on. OK, so a clockwise moment will tighten the nut and an anti-clockwise moment will loosen it. So moments are clockwise or anti-clockwise about a point. How do we work out the size of the moment? Moment is force times perpendicular distance. OK, uh, the perpendicular being very important. So if we look here, this force here will produce a clockwise moment about the nut. Uh, moments are measured in Newton meters because it's Newtons times meters, but not in the same direction, perpendicular. We say they are measured in Newton meters. So, for example, if the force is 50 Newtons and the distance is 20 centimeters, then the moment about the center of the nut will be 10 Newton meters clockwise. A clockwise moment of 10 Newton meters. Okay, so what moment does the 80 Newton force produce about this nut? Uh, if you want to pause the video and work it out for yourself, I'll show you the answers, how to do it. Now, there's two ways of thinking about it. We can think about it in terms of 80 Newtons times the perpendicular distance. And you could sketch a little triangle and you should realize that the perpendicular distance is 20 cos 27. The way that I would do it is I would <clears throat> split the 80 Newton force into components and I would consider the component which is perpendicular to the distance. And the component of that 80 Newton force uh, perpendicular to the distance is 80 cos 27. So the moment will be 80 cos 27 times 0.2. So it's the, if you like, it's the perpendicular force times the distance. I would tend to do it the second way. I find it much, much straight, more straightforward, a lot easier. The principle of moments. When an object is in equilibrium, then the sum of the clockwise moments about any point is equal to the sum of the anti-clockwise moments about that point. So if we take moments about point X, then clockwise will be W2 times D2, W1 times D1 is the anti-clockwise, and they will be equal and opposite. Okay, why am I taking moments about point X? Because there are other forces involved here. There is, for example, there's the weight of the beam, w, well, call it W again, uh, and there will be some kind of a, a contact force, a reaction force there. Now, I'm not interested in those forces. So if I take moments about that point, I don't have to worry about them. Any force that goes through a point doesn't have a moment about that point because the distance is zero. OK, so we could take moments about any point in this particular example. X is the obvious point because then I can ignore those two forces. If you'd like to have a go at this question by yourself and I'll do it for you in three, two, one. So uh, a uniform beam of weight 30 Newtons. Um, on a knife edge at its center, it is in equilibrium. Calculate reaction force, cut right. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add this 30 Newton force to the diagram. That's a rubbish arrow. 
So there's my 30 Newton force there. Okay. Uh, we will have a reaction force at the pivot there, R. And to get the reaction force, we don't need to take moments. Uh, if it's in equilibrium, then 20 plus 30 is 50 plus 28 is 78. So the reaction force will be 78 newtons. Now, to calculate distance x, uh, you could take moments at several places. I think the simplest one would be take moments about that point there, call that point x, and basically 20, 20 times. Now, you could say 20 times 0 0.45 if you wanted to, uh, or you could be very lazy and just say 20 times 45 uh, equals 28 times x. And if you do that, then your answer x will come out in centimeters. It doesn't matter. Change it to meters and your answer comes out in meters. Work that out for yourself. Uh, here's another one for you to have a go at. Uh, I'll pen paper calculator. I'll show you my answer in three, two, one. Okay, a uniform beam of length six meters and weight 2000 newtons. So I'm just going to add to the diagram like halfway. I'm going to add my 2000 newtons there in the middle because it's a uniform beam. So 2000 newtons and that will be three meters from that point there. Uh, Rests on two supports at its ends, a man of weight 700 newtons. So this guy here is 700 newtons. Uh, and that's 1.8 meters from the right support. So that distance is 1.8 meters from there. Uh, add arrows to this diagram to show the forces acting on the beam and calculate their magnitudes well. We've got 2000 newtons, we've got 700 newtons, we've got two reaction forces, and I'm going to call them R1 and R2. And I know that R2 will be bigger because that's the heavy end. Okay, so uh, let's generate some equations. Now, we don't need to take moments to say R1 plus R2 equals 2700 do we r1 plus r2 r1 plus r2 is 2700 then uh, we could uh, take moments about call that point x and i would take moments about point x and if we take moments about point x then um, R2 times 6, R2 times 6 equals uh, the clockwise moments 2000 times 3, 2000 times 3, plus uh, 700 times uh, okay, so this distance here will be 1.2, so 4.2. 700 times 4.2. And so you've got R2, haven't you? Okay. Uh, to get R1, you could, you could take moments about th this point, call it Y, or you could just use that equation would be the simplest way of doing it. Okay, here's a little tricky one for you. Uh, have a read, have a go yourself. I'll show you my answer in three, two, one. So a three meter drawbridge consists of a uniform plank of weight a thousand newtons. So we have a thousand newtons coming down here. That's a thousand newtons there. Okay. Uh, it is supported in the position shown by a cable. So this is my cable, and so I'll call that tension T. Um, there are three, and a frictionless hinge. So there's my frictionless hinge. So there's no friction moment at the hinge. 
okay? Uh, there are three forces acting on the bridge. Draw arrows on this diagram to show the direction of these forces and it's in equilibrium. So we have the tension, we have the weight of the bridge and I know that the reaction force at the hinge will go through that point. So there's the reaction force there at the hinge. And how do I know? Because there are three forces in equilibrium, they go through the same point. Uh, calculate the tension in the cable. So to get the tension in the cable, what I'm gonna do is, well, uh, this reaction force looks like a nightmare. I don't know any angles or anything. So let's take moments about that point. That point is point X, let's say, so, uh, clockwise moments about X so my clockwise moment about X so that angle there is 30 degrees so it will be um, my clockwise moment will be a thousand uh, now a thousand cos 30 thousand cos 30 times uh, 1.5 because it's in the middle of the beam 1.5 that's meant to be a point uh, equals and my anti-clockwise moment will be t cos 20 because that's the component of t uh, perpendicular to the beam so t cos 20 times by because this distance uh, from there to X will be two meters because I know that's one meter uh, and there you go T is the only unknown work it out for yourself is this object in equilibrium uh, and the answer is no okay you've got two forces which are equal and opposite um, but there will be a resultant moment and it's a special case and it's called a couple. Just basically recognize what a couple is. It's not that important really. If you get a question involving two equal and opposite forces, you'll be fine, you know how to do it. But a couple is a pair of equal and opposite forces that do not pass through the same point. And we talk about the moment of a couple. And the moment of a couple is just one of the forces times the distance between them. So, uh, and that's the moment uh, at any point along this line. So uh, if that distance there is, I don't know, 0 0.4, then the moment of the couple will be 30 times 0 0.4. And that will be the same moment at any point along that line, okay? So that's what a couple is. Uh, here's another example of a couple. Uh, do you remember electric motors? So in that position there, there are two equal and opposite forces, and those forces will produce in that position, well, a couple, okay, which will be a turning force, making the motor whiz around. Stability. Let's talk about stability. Now, um, the middle box, the box in the middle is gonna fall anti-clockwise, and the box will maybe tipple a bit, but end up straight pointing up the box on the right is going to fall clockwise because it is unstable uh, why will it fall clockwise well if we consider the the forces acting on the box okay on the first diagram there's just the weight of the box and the normal contact force on the second diagram uh, you should see that there will be an anti-clockwise moment which will tend to put the box in the upright position so it won't fall over. However, on the right hand diagram, it will topple clockwise because there will be a clockwise moment. Why? Because the weight lies outside the base. Okay, the weight acts from the center of mass of the box. And in this particular case, because the, the base is actually just a single point, the weight acts outside the, the, uh, the base. The line of action of the weight uh, is outside the base. Stability. 
an object will be stable if the line of action of its weight passes through the base. OK, so there's our racing driver. And basically the weight of the car is there and that's very, very much inside the base. It's going to be very, very stable because it has a wide, it has a wide base there. OK, so it could the, the car could tip over quite a bit and it would always fall back onto its wheels and it has a low center of mass as well. OK, which makes that more likely. Uh, this is a test that they actually do on buses. This shows a, a topple test being carried out on a bus. OK, under what conditions do you think a bus like this would be most likely to topple over? Have a think about it before I tell you. So the center of mass of the bus is going to be somewhere around there. OK, so basically it's going to topple over if the, if the line of action of the weight is outside the base. So um, let's say if there were lots and lots of people on the upper deck, then it would have a higher center of mass. Uh, if it was going around a corner, then it would start to tilt a bit. OK, uh, if it was a, a very windy day or if it was driving on a, a sloped road or something like that. OK, so if you can imagine if the line of action of the weight it's like the first example we did. If the line of action of the weight is outside the base, and that's going to be more likely if it has a high center of mass uh, and if it's tilting more. Okay. Uh, 